Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining me again to my awesome animal lockdown live lessons. Um, today we are going to be covering rabbits and we're going to be talking all about our bunnies and what amazing pets they are but also how it's really important to look after them properly and all of that kind of thing and how they think. If you were here for the cat one the other day we did a lot about how our cats think and why that's important in the way we look after them and so we're going to do all of that. If you are watching and would like to say hello, please post in the comments if your parents or guardians say that that's okay. And if you're lucky enough to own bunnies, hi Lexi, and you want to share some pictures of them in the comments as well, as long as you have permission to do that, then that would be awesome. I'm sure we would all love to see your rabbits. So I'm just going to start sharing my screen for you guys now and we'll get on. If uh you have any friends that you think would like to see this then please do uh let them know about it share and tell them and then if you've got any friends who aren't on facebook and but do want to watch this then um it will also be up on youtube and on instagram tv later on today so here we are this is my how to rock at rabbits and there is a little rabbit already rocking. Okay. So like I said, the most important thing is to understand how our bunnies think. And if we understand how our bunnies think, then it means we're going to be able to understand how to look after them better. So our rabbits are prey animals. The reason I keep looking away is because I can't see your comments Please, when I'm, so um, I can't see your comments when I am doing the talk. So I'm looking at my phone to just check who's saying hello. So our rabbits are prey animals. So we've got, hi, Rosalie and Yin. Um, hi, Aidan. Thank you so much for joining us. So our rabbits are prey animals. Something like 30 to 40 other animals eat them. A prey animal is one which is hunted by lots of other different animals. Everybody thinks our bunnies are tasty and would like to have them for their, for their lunch. But of course, our bunnies don't want to be eaten. So our bunnies are genetically imprinted, completely evolved to always be on the lookout for predators and for problems. And that's really relevant to how we keep them, how we keep them happy, how we keep them safe, and also how we get on with them as well. Because if you imagine, if you go up to your bunny and just pick them up and scoop them up in your arms to give them a big cuddle they're not going to like that because that's going to be a bit of a surprise and you know being held really tightly is not actually that dissimilar to being carried off by a fox so it's also really relevant for how we handle them and how we interact with them but our bunnies are active up uh, uh, in the wild, a rabbit will travel the area of about two football pitches every single day. Now, so that means that we've got to be able to give them lots of space to roam and be active. Now, I'm pretty certain there's not going to be many people with a, with a back garden as big as a football pitch. But it's a really good fact to remember when it comes to thinking about how much space our rabbits need and what we can do to help them be active. They're not just fluffy little bunnies that sit in a corner. They're busy little bees that need to be kept moving. And they are sociable. Our bunnies in the wild live with loads of other rabbits. So every bun needs a buddy. Every bunny needs a honey. It's really, really important that we try very hard to not have our rabbits living on their own they must always live if at all possible with another rabbit so not with an well, not with a guinea pig rabbits and guinea pigs don't get on it's really important that rabbits do live with other rabbits right who else is here oh my goodness there's loads of you this is amazing oh hi Gemma uh hi Kyla Kayla is it Kayla Ophelia and Isla and Ruby and Jude and Bo and Ben and hi Reese you're back it's great to see you again um so thank you everybody keep commenting if you've got any questions do ask them in the comments I'll do my best to answer them if I can so your bunny needs an awesome place to live and these two setups that you can see here are examples of brilliant bunny places to live outside you can see that the one on one side look at all those little tunnels that they've built I mean in the wild rabbits dig and they live in tunnels underground so these people have actually made them tunnels to go between different places in the garden. Of course, the tunnels are also a great place to hide, uh, which is what they need because of the predators. And then on the other side, you can see we've got tunnels. We've got, up, that looks like an upturned dog bed, which doesn't have to be expensive or difficult, the things that we have for our buns. And also you can see that those bunnies are on the lookout. So they're sitting on top of their things and they're watching out and they're seeing what's happening around them. And there's two of them, of course and this space. And this is the really important thing. A hutch is not enough. That is not a hutch. That is a prison. And although 
these kind of things are sold as the ideal place to keep bunnies in. They're absolutely fine for overnight um, or to be a bedroom or to be part of a much bigger setup, but that is not enough to keep a rabbit. Imagine if you lived in your downstairs toilet, if you've got one, and were never let out. That's kind of the equivalent of that. But on the face of it, you might someone might think, well, that's fine, you've got a toilet, you've got running water at the sink, you've got a window to look out of, there's some space to move around, and I'll put some food in once or twice a day. What more could you want in the downstairs toilet? But I'm not sure that you would like that very much, and your bunny doesn't like that either. So a hutch is not enough. They get lonely. There's nothing to do. And also, it's really easy to ignore them. I don't know what the weather's like where you are, but today, the weather here is awful. And who wants to go out down to the bottom of the garden if you've got one to open a hutch for a bunny to play with them or do anything in this kind of weather? It's just really easy to run out, wang some food in, shut the door and, and go back again and think, well, they're safe. They're warm. They've got food. What more could they want? They need a lot more than just a hutch. And this isn't OK either. So we've got a hutch up top and a run down the bottom. Yay, they've got some space. Not enough. So if you have a run for your rabbit, it needs to be at least six foot long, two foot wide and two foot high. And basically the length of three hops of your bunny long, the width of your bunny stretched out and the height of your bunny when they sit up like this. But that is the absolute minimum. And ideally, we should be giving our buns loads and loads more space than that. What about giving them the whole garden? So these bunnies are living in the garden and it's kind of, you do have to rabbit proof your garden. They are chewers, they are diggers. They will do their best to escape if they can. Um, but if you have got, uh, a, a, if you're lucky enough to have a garden and you can rabbit proof it, then that is a brilliant thing to do. And if you watch this little bun on his own in the corner down there, you can see that he's doing these little jumps in the air and they are called binkies. And that's where your rabbit literally jumps for joy. And they're all four paws go bing off the floor and they jump. Look, there he went. And that just means that that's a happy little bunny enjoying his life outside in the garden. But your rabbit also needs places to hide and places to look out. Because remember, your rabbit is everybody's lunch. So here are some examples of places that your bunny can hide. You've got there, you've got a cardboard box, which is a bunny fort. But I don't know about you, I am having quite a few uh, boxes delivered to my house at the moment, slightly more than normal. So you can always make something. It doesn't have to be expensive. You don't have to buy things. You just take your Amazon box, turn it upside down and stick it in with the rabbit. And you'll be you'll be fine if you get an adult to help you cut a hole in or take one of the sides off. And that's a brilliant place for them to be. You will find, though, that if you put anything cardboard in, they will chew it. They're not necessarily eating the cardboard, but your bunnies love to do home improvements and to make things as perfect as possible. So you can buy them these beautiful cardboard bunny forts, but they will get chewed. And then that picture in the middle is that as a house rabbit. So some people keep the rabbits inside. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. And look at all those places. That's a part of the living room. And there's one, two, three, four, five different places that rabbit could get into to hide or to sit on. So they have to have loads. Or you can buy things like that amazing little snuggle tunnel there on the end. And they need lots of places and different places and not just one or two, quite a few. Right, who else is watching? Let's have a look. Oh, hi, Wendy and Erin. Thanks for joining. It's lovely. And uh, Isabel. Hello, Isabel. I believe that your mum sent me some pictures of your rabbit for this talk. So thank you very much. You might even see your legs in a minute. I'll let you see if you can spot that. Hi, Ivy. Aaron, Jess and Karis are watching. That's amazing. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. I hope you're enjoying this and learning a lot. Right, so your rabbit needs places to hide as well. So here's some examples of places to hide. Again, we've got that, um, you, no, no, we're onto places to look out now, sorry. So we've, we've got that bunny fort there. So those are brilliant, or any cardboard box is brilliant if it will support their weight, because they can go in or they can go out. And you can see those two bunnies are hanging out on the top there, which means that they're together, they're comfortable, they're warm, but they're able to look out. Those two rabbits, we've already seen them already. They're busy keeping an eye on everything around them. And this bunny I love, he's a house bunny, and he's decided that the place that he's gonna sit on top of is actually his owner's bed. And if you get a bit closer up, look at him there, he's literally taken over. He's sitting on the bed, but that's fabulous. And then if he gets worried or fancies a change of scene, he can just hop down and hop under the bed instead. And your bunny needs something to do. They are busy little bees. They're active. They're intelligent creatures. Again, you don't want to sit 
in that hutch all day and just staring at four walls and looking out onto the garden. They need to be busy so they can play games and they can play with toys. So here we've got a rabbit. They've been given some treats in an egg box. These things don't have to be expensive. You can put some snacks and treats and fresh things and leaves in an egg box and just make them work for it. This little bunny here's got, got a willow ball and he thinks that's the most amazing thing. And this on the other side, how clever is this? Somebody has taken their washing line. I hope the mum was all right with it. Hung fresh little bits of greenery from it and that means it can go in the rabbit's cage and the rabbit can eat it because again rabbits do chew things off trees and off bushes and that's amazing so they don't always have to forage on the floor they can reach up and stand up and reach and obviously those things are going to like wriggle around and it's going to be quite challenging for them to get so anything like that you can get proper rabbit toys or you can make them these things yourself there is a link in the comments to um, a website from the pdsa and that discusses lots of different toys and treat balls that you can make for your bunny. So have a look at that if you fancy doing something else. Right, so does your rabbit need to live indoors? Lots of people keep bunnies indoors now as indoors pets and they're amazing pets and you can keep them indoors. But there are some pros and cons because don't forget they are, you know, they are animals who have been designed to live outside and like I say are really active and uh, there will not be many people with a football pitch outside their house. But I doubt there's anybody with a football pitch inside their house. So here are the pros. The pros of keeping rabbits indoors, they're safe. You absolutely know they're not going to be picked up by a fox or they're not going to be able to escape out of a hole at the back of the garden and wander off. You can keep an eye on them, which means that, you know, if they're old or they're young or you're worried about their health or you just want to monitor them closely, you can see, you can see how much they're pooing, you can see how much they're eating, you can see how much they're moving around. And of course, you can bond with them. You know, our bunnies are, because they're prey animals in the wild, they love us just like we love them, but they are much more naturally, much more cautious, much more flighty, much more nervous. And it takes a long time to gain a rabbit's trust. And you have to work with them every day, at least twice a day, sit down in their cage, give them treats, encourage them to come and sit on your knee. And obviously, like I said, in weather like this, it's pretty miserable outside. Who wants to sit on the wet, muddy garden? But if they're in your house, that's kind of easy. And you can see there that that amazing rabbit set up with loads of different things for them to do and places for them to hide. But it's not actually always that brilliant. First of all, they don't have a lot of space unless you've got a house rabbit that literally has the run of the house, which some people do. <laughs> and they are very, very lucky bunnies indeed. But most people with house rabbits will keep them like in a corner of the living room or penned up somewhere or they'll spend at least some of their time in the day penned up. You know, so they just inevitably often house rabbits don't have as much space. They can chew things they shouldn't. Your rabbit, rabbits love to chew and they particularly enjoy chewing wires. And I'm fairly certain that if they nip around the back of the telly and nibble at the wires at the back of the telly, nobody's going to be very happy if you try to get on Netflix and it doesn't work. So you do have to really, really work hard to bunny proof your home. And bunnies are sneaky and they love to get in little corners and chew on wires and that kind of thing. In the wild, what they're doing with that kind of thing is they're clearing paths. You know, if your rabbit lives in somewhere maybe that's like got lots of bushes, again, they're prey animals. They need to be able to run away. So they keep all of their escape routes clear. So they'll go and they'll nibble at the bushes and keep them clear and move any twigs and any sort of thing out of the way. So chewing on wires and stuff, is, a, especially in small enclosed places like around the back of the telly, it's actually a really natural behavior for rabbits. So you do have to be extremely careful that everything is rabbit proofed. And also it can be boring. Like in our houses is lovely. It's warm and it's quiet and it's calm and it's perfectly fine, but it is kind of a bit dull. You know, your bunnies are thinking all the time. And then when they're outside, they can see the wind in the trees and the change in the light and the change in the temperature. And they've got stuff to do and stuff to watch. Whereas inside, it can actually be a bit dull. Nothing temperature changes, nothing. The lights don't change unless we turn them on and off. So you, if you've got indoor bunnies, you have to work doubly hard to make sure there's always something for them to be entertained by. Uh, <clears throat> Susanna asks, can the wires kill rabbits? Well, possibly, yeah, if they chew through the wire. Yeah, it won't only disturb the telly. Um, it could actually hurt your bunny. Yeah, they can get electric burns and electric shocks from wires. So, yeah, that, that's a really important point. Um, who else is watching? Oh, Donna loves bunnies. Hi, Donna. Uh, and Lucy, you spotted Peter. That's great. 
and oh sue from wildwood bunnies she gave me a lot of the pictures here today sue i have actually forgotten to link you in the comments i will do that after i have finished but the two most important things for your bunny by an absolute country mile are a friend and a great diet and if you make sure your bunny's got a got a friend to, to be with and an amazing things to eat then you will do by far the best you will keep them healthy and happy you get the best chance of them staying healthy and happy for their entire lives right quiz are you ready guys this is a really important fact this is one of my favorite facts about bunnies so i want your guesses please every day your rabbit should eat a pile of hay as big as your hand or as big as they are. Okay, so should they eat hay, a bit, a pile of hay as big as they are, or should you just, or do they need just a handful of hay and whatever fits in your hand is perfect. So let me know, comment in the comments and we'll see who gets it right. So, but your bunny needs a friend. In the wild, rabbits live in groups of up to 30 related rabbits in a warren. They are not designed to live on their own. Look at all those bunnies out in the wild. What are they doing? They're on the watch, but look how they're positioned. Every single one of them is looking in a different direction. So they're all looking out for each other. And so your bunny is just preconditioned completely. They have to have somebody else to live with. A bunny on their own will be tired because they've always got to look out. So this rabbit doesn't actually live on his own, but he is sat on top of another beautiful example of a bunny fort. Um, so he's sat on top of it, so he's keeping an eye on his environment, but what if he wants to go to sleep? He's not gonna be able to go to sleep, or he is gonna go to sleep, but he's gonna be kind of stressed out, because as soon as he closes his eyes, he can't see what's coming. But if he's got a, a mate there with him, who he can have a snooze and the other one can stay awake and watch things, then that makes their lives much easier. You know, I think we really underestimate how stressed out and how tired rabbits are that live on their own. And then who, when they're tired, gets grumpy, I certainly do. So again, if you've got a rabbit who's living on their own, who's really tired, you go and want to go and pet them and play with them and they're kind of a grump, it's probably because they're a bit exhausted. And if they had a friend, everything would just chill out and their stress levels would drop. They'd be much happier and they'd be a better pet for us as well. And a rabbit on their own would be just so lonely. Look at these two bunnies in there, sitting in there, eating their hay. And look at that brown one giving the black and white one some kisses and they mutually groom and they look after each other's coats and they get to the bits that they struggle to reach and they kiss each other. It's when you've got two bunnies that are in love, it is one of the most lovely things to watch. And it really shows you how important it is that they have each other. So here's the answer. Every day a rabbit should eat a pile of hay as big as they are. Hay is the most important thing in their diet by an absolute mile. They should eat every day a pile of hay as big as they are. Who they got that right? Oh, Zoe, you got that right. Lisa, you got that right as well. Uh, Jemmy, you're right. Some people have different sized hands. And if you've got really big hands and a really small bunny, the answer might be right for both of them. But the more, the better, as very, at the very least, as big as they are. Um, so they should be, I think sometimes what we do is we treat our rabbits like we treat our cats and dogs. They have a pie, they have a bowl of food in the corner of the cage or the run or wherever they are um, that's full all day, like we'll often do with our, particularly our cats, they'll often have a, a, bo a bowl of biscuits, won't they, that we will keep topped up and they will go backwards and forwards to feed. So we feed them with a big bowl of food in the corner and then maybe a bit of hay. Uh, but the hay sometimes might run out. Whereas actually what we should do is treat them more like horses. If you've ever been lucky enough to be into horses or know about horses, if you've got a horse, they're out in the field grazing on the grass or they're in their stable with a hay net all the time and they'll only be fed a bucket of food maybe once or twice a day and they polish that off in seconds and it's gone and then they go back to the hay and that's exactly what it should be like for our rabbits. Actually, for about 20 hours at least of a day, they really ideally wouldn't have any pellets available to to them and they would just eat the hay because imagine if somebody didn't tell you what was healthy and they gave you a great big pile of lovely healthy vegetables and fiber and bread and then on the other plate they gave you some sweets and some chocolate and some cake you know eat the sweets and chocolate and cake and that's kind of the same thing for the bunnies if they're not they're not always the best at knowing what's the best for them so it's up to us and that's why these things are important so they need a great diet and feeding your rabbit a great diet is the best way by miles to keep them healthy and to give them the best chance of a long and healthy life. I 
love this picture. This picture is a perfect representation of how you should feed your bunny. So the vast majority of their diet should be hay. 80% of everything they eat should be hay or grass or that kind of thing. A small amount of green leafy veggies ideally every day. But again, this is where your hand comes in, about half the size of your hand, so quite small. A little bit of a good quality pelleted rabbit food, so not the muesli stuff, because the muesli stuff, if you've had a bunny on muesli, you'll know I'm absolutely right. They eat the muesli, they eat all their favourite bits and leave all the bits they don't like, which again is kind of the equivalent of us looking at a plate of vegetables and cake and eating the cake and leaving the vegetables. So it has to be pellets because then they can't what we call selectively feed, particularly with the muesli, they end up quite low in calcium, which can make their bones very soft, which can make, give them issues like dental problems, um, which is a very, very, very common problem in rabbits. So you need to heat, so 80% hay, small handful of fresh, tablespoon of pellets per bunny, and treats when you want to bribe them, spoil them. And here's a fun fact, particularly about rabbit's teeth. Are you ready? Rabbits have teeth that grow all the time. Their teeth are constantly, so if you're of an age or you can remember when you used, when you lost your baby teeth and your adult teeth came through and it was growing through the gum, that's what rabbit's teeth are like. They're constantly growing out because so much of their diet is tough, woody stuff like hay and grass really hard to chew and if they didn't have teeth that grow all the time they'd quite quickly wear the teeth away to absolutely nothing and then they'd be like a little gummy bear rabbit with just gums and no teeth at all but if they don't eat enough hay and they don't have the right diet there's nothing to grind down on those teeth and the teeth can overgrow so these are a couple of examples of teeth that have overgrown so on one side you can see those are those front incisor teeth that have grown out of that rabbit's mouth <clears throat> they should be grinding on each other all the time like this, nibbling on the hay, nibbling on wood. And also some of our flat face breeds, uh, that's a Netherland dwarf there, sometimes have problems where their teeth aren't correctly aligned. So they grow and they don't grind on each other. And then this one, if you look really carefully, you can see three little white squares at the back of that bunny's mouth. And at the very back, one of them has got kind of a spike coming up. And that's what happens. The teeth get too long. They develop those horrible, nasty spikes. And imagine that sticking straight into the side of your mouth. You're not going to want to eat. And it's really, really painful and sore. And so they don't eat hay and it gets worse and worse and worse. And it's one, unfortunately, it's one of the most common reasons that we have to euthanize rabbits uh, is because they just have dental problems that we cannot control. And a lot of it, some of it is down to genetics. Some of it is down to low calcium if they haven't been eating the right pellet diets. But a lot of it is down to them not eating hay. Um, so we really, really want our bunnies to as much hay as possible. And so what we have to do is we have to try and make hay fun because we want them to eat it and we want them to love it. So here's some ways to make hay fun. Ditch the food bowl, get those pellets and your fresh food and scatter them in the hay. Make them go hunting for the pellets and the fresh food. Put it in the hay, mix it all up and then they can they can snuffle it out. It gives them something to do, keeps them entertained and they'll eat a load of hay on the way. Stuff hay into toys. This is a bunny with hay stuffed into a toilet roll. I mean, we've all got toilet rolls in our house at the moment, quite a few of them if your house is anything like mine. So just get an adult to help you put some holes in the cardboard, wang a load of hay in there, pull it out of the holes and give it to your bunny and they'll be have a great time pulling it all out, sorting it all out, spraying it everywhere, but eating it. And that's the most important thing. Use hay with added herbs. So sometimes hay can be can be a bit bland and boring. And especially if you've got a run a rabbit who maybe isn't a big hay eater, not a big fan. Maybe you've rescued them and they came from somewhere that didn't feed them enough hay and they've never got into the habit. You do get that sometimes. Try feeding hay that's kind of tasty. So this is a, a bag of hay that's got herbs in it. So anything that makes it taste nice is better. And this is the kind of hay we really should be feeding our rabbits, these small bags that are dust extracted and really fresh and really tasty. It's OK to feed them kind of cheaper hay or if you've got horses to give them horse hay. But it's often a bit dusty and a bit dry and not very interesting. And some rabbits really aren't that keen. So it's OK to feed hay that tastes nice. And don't use short chop hay. Sometimes, especially for indoor bunnies, there's brands of hay where the strands are about this long. And that's really cool because it's easy for us to clean up. But what our buns really love to do is they like to pick bits out. They like to nuffle through it, pick their favourite bits, nibble off the ends and leave the stalk. 
So the short chop here is just really dead boring because I'm like, Meh, it's all the same. I don't like it. I don't want it. I can't find a favorite bit. So, and also, uh, you need to change the hay at least every couple of days because you can leave the hay in and you'll be like, well, there's still loads of hay there. Well, actually, they've picked out all their favorites and they don't want the hay anyway. So just keep it moving and put it in the litter tray. Here's another fun fact about bunnies. They like to poo and eat at the same time. Blech. But bunnies think it's amazing. So if you've got an indoor rabbit and you use a litter tray, stick the hay in the litter tray. You can see those buns in love. What I didn't tell you before is actually they're sat in their litter tray. And if you look at the bottom of that picture, you can see some poo right there that they've used. And then these are other examples of rabbits sitting in litter trays, eating their hay. And they absolutely love to do two things at once. They're multitaskers. You know, they've got it down. They've got it down. So put the hay in the litter tray as well. You'll end up throwing quite a bit of the hay away, but it's worth it because they need to eat it. And finally, we're nearly at the end now. I know this has been a long one. Um, water. Now, here's a really interesting thing about water. How do you feed your bunnies their water? Most bunny people give their rabbits water from bottles, but rabbits don't like them. Water bottles for rabbits exist because they're kind of convenient for us. And also they came from the, a time when rabbits were using like a lot of cosmetic testing and, and, and lots of testing was done on buns and they were kept in really industrial facilities where it was easy for them to just fill the water up from bottles. But actually they're really difficult for them to use. Lots of bunnies don't like them. They can only get teeny tiny dribbles out at once. And especially if they've got any health problems or they get older and they get a bit stiff, it's really difficult for them to drink out of them. And sometimes they dribble and they dribble everywhere and like you put the bottle up and within an hour it's completely empty because it's all dribbled out. And so a lot of our rabbits are kind of chronically dehydrated. So they don't have enough water in them. So don't ditch the bottle and use a bowl. Again, sometimes we do want to treat our rabbits like we do our cats and dogs. And here's a couple of rabbits having an absolutely lovely time drinking their water out of their water bowls. It's easy for them. They've got tongs, they can lap. That's what they're designed to do. In the wild, they don't wait till a, dri a drip of water runs down the side of a tree and then <laughs> leans up and, and drinks it. They put their heads down in a puddle or they eat the water, the, they lick the water off, off the grass or something like that. So if we can go away with one thing or two things today that I want you to know about your buns, I want you to know that they have to eat loads and loads of hay and that we should be giving them their water out of water bowls. And there we are. That's it for today. Thanks for listening, everybody. I hope you really enjoyed it. I'm just going to shut my screen down now, but I'm not going to go anywhere. So if I do this and this and stop the screen, there we are. Hello, everybody. I hope you really enjoyed that. Um, oh, Lisa, you use a bowl. You go to the top of the class. Well done. Right. Let's have a little look. Uh, could you share a picture of rabbit picture of the types of food they need? So, um, no, I don't have one ready and available. But basically, all you need to do is feed pellets. So if they're for their hard food, not muesli, no rabbit muesli, nothing where that looks kind of interesting with different colored bits, just pellets. That's all they need. And then fresh food, they can basically eat anything fresh. Uh, but the best thing to do is uh, green leafy greens so spinach cabbage kale you can pick things out of the garden you know, get online you don't have to go out and buy them uh, a beautiful bag of fresh spinach they can you know go out in the garden and pick some grass and some flowers that little rabbit in that video was eating dandelions they can eat dandelions and there's loads of places online that you can find safe things for your bunnies to eat um eat from the garden. So you can just go foraging, go for a nature walk, maybe when the weather is slightly better than today, and pick something that you know your bunny will love and then take it home to your bunny, scatter it in their hay so they have to work it out. And jobs are good and you've done a brilliant job. Bye bye Reese. thanks for watching. Can I do one on guinea pigs? I will do my very best to do one on guinea pigs if I have the time because I love guinea pigs as much as everybody loves guinea pigs. So let's have a little look. Anything else? Anyone else? Who haven't I said hello to? Oh, Gemma, hi again. And uh, is it possible for bunnies to have um, allergic reactions? Mm, yep, yeah, but it's not very common. I don't think I've ever seen a bunny with an allergic reaction. I've seen them lots in cats and dogs, but never in a rabbit. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I think 
I have spoken to everybody. So there we go, guys. And half an hour is up. And I try to keep these things to about half an hour because we've all got places to go. And no, well, actually, we don't have anywhere to go. We don't have anyone to see. Uh, but I'm sure you've got something great planned for the rest of the afternoon. Uh, so thank you so much for joining me again. That is absolutely brilliant. I will see you on Friday when... Oh, hi, Caitlin uh, and Eleanor, if you're there as well. So I will see you on Friday when we are going to be learning all about poo. So not for the faint of heart. There'll be lots of icky, disgusting pictures, but we're going to learn you going to learn all sorts of cool things about poo, how you can tell your pets are healthy, how you know when they're poorly um, and all loads of things you never knew you needed to know about poo. So this video will be available as of now to rewatch if you want to or share with your friends. It's also going to be up on YouTube and IGTV. Thank you very much for watching everybody. I will see you again really soon. Bye.